The specification tells us that we need to know five different precipitation reactions of transition metals with sodium hydroxide. I mean, the basic chemistry is the same for all of them. There is a pattern that's to be seen here, but it's the color changes that are probably the biggest thing that you need to remember. So let's have a look at what's actually happening when we add NaOH to these different transition metal ions in aqueous solution. What we're gonna be doing in a practical sense is adding aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise. Now, what I mean by that is just drop by drop. You're not flooding it with NaOH, you're just adding NaOH, just drop by drop to these aqueous ions in solution. Now, what happens is these OH minus ions from the sodium hydroxide act as a base. Now, a base means they're accepting hydrogen ions. Where do they get those hydrogen ions from? Well, it's the H2O ligands that are arranged around that aqueous complex, okay? So they take a H plus away from the H2O, leaving an OH minus in their place. Now, depending on the charge of the ion, you know, that really dictates how many OH minuses are left there. But essentially, for all of these, they neutralize the charge on the complex ion, forming a precipitate. So we're starting with two plus or three plus ions. And as they leave OH minuses, that neutralizes the charge. They don't have a charge when they form that new complex. And that means they are insoluble, okay? So they form a precipitate because there's no charge on the new complex that we're forming. So let's have a look at the five different transition metal ions that we need to know this reaction for. First up, let's take a look at copper. Now, as with all of these ions, as you'll see, we start with the hexa-aqua complex. So that's six water molecules acting as ligands in that octahedral complex. Now for copper two plus, that actually reacts with two hydroxide ions. Why two? Well, because it's got a two plus charge. And what they do is they take two hydrogen ions away from two of those water ligands, leaving two OHs behind. So we end up with a Cu, OH2, H2O4, okay? Four of those water molecules remain untouched. Two of them have had a hydrogen ion taken away and that neutralizes the complex. It's no longer two plus. It has no charge in it now because the two OH minuses cancel those out. So that's why it's solid. That's why it's a precipitate. And of course, as a consequence, the two OH minuses have taken two H pluses and we make two lots of water. Color change for this one. Well, no real color change per se, but we start with a light blue solution and we end up with a light blue precipitate. So that's what we're going to see. It's a real significant change, of course, because you're forming a precipitate, but no real color change to speak of here. OK, so that's copper. Nice and straightforward. We're going on to iron next. First up, it's iron two plus. Now, again, we're starting with the hexa aqua two plus complex ion. But this time, of course, it's iron. So we've got H2O bracket six, two plus. Now, again, because it's two plus, we're reacting with two hydroxide ions. And again, they're taking two H pluses away from two of those waters. Now, just like copper above, it's exactly the same complex, except that, of course, it's got iron two plus in the middle of it. So it's FeOH brackets two, H2O brackets four, and two H2O. So you can see the similarity between these two equations here because they're both two plus ions. So color change for this one. Well, also like copper, there's no color change per se. We've got this green solution of Fe2 plus in, in aqueous solution, and then we end up with a green precipitate. So again, no color change, but the formation of a precipitate is pretty easy to see when you add the uh, sodium hydroxide to it. So that's iron two plus. Now moving on to iron three plus, this is where it differs slightly. Again, we start with the hexa aqua complex Fe H2O bracket six, this time three plus of course, but this time they're reacting with three hydroxide ions. Why? Because they're neutralizing the charge on that complex and you need three OHs to neutralize the three plus. So we get a slightly different complex because of that. We get the Fe OH brackets three, H2O brackets three. So we've replaced, well not replaced, but we've taken three hydrogen ions away from three waters this time. And of course, making three waters as a consequence as a byproduct, okay? So you can see how we're neutralizing the charge. So you don't need to remember how many hydroxide ions, just look at the charge. And however big the plus charge is, that's how many OHs you need to add. So we do actually get a color change with this one. Iron three plus is classic yellow solution. That's our hexa aqua iron three plus that's in yellow and I'm underlining that just so you can see that clearly on the video. Uh, but we do get a brown precipitate, so a proper color change here, all right? So FeOH brackets three, 
H2O brackets, so he is a brown precipitate. Fourth one out of five here is Cobalt. Now again, starting with the Cobalt Hexa Aqua 2 Plus complex ion. And of course, because it's 2 plus, it's only 2 OH, OH minus that we're reacting with it. So again, we're going to get exactly the same complex as the copper and iron 2 plus. The fact that we've taken two H pluses away and we end up with two OH minuses cancelling out that 2 plus charge and making two waters. So you can see the pattern here. Okay. Now again, color change. Very, very distinctive one here. We start with a pink solution of CO2 plus. That's kind of classic. We should recognize that now. And we get a blue precipitate of our OH brackets to H2O brackets for cobalt complex. And again, neutral, that's why it's solid. And whenever you're doing these, make sure you are putting those states in because you know the difference between an aqueous complex ion and a solid complex ion, that's difference obviously between something in solution and something that's a precipitate. Now we're on to our last one, which is chromium. And this is a little different than the other four. Looking at our chromium 3+, plus, you know what? It follows the same pattern as our Fe3+. Plus, all right, so we have our hexa aqua complex to start, 3+, plus, and it's reacting with three hydroxide ions. And again, neutralizing that charge to give the Cr OH brackets 3, H2O brackets 3. So three hydrogen ions taken away, away from it there and leaving three waters. Color change. Well, we start with a green solution of our chromium, but then you get a green precipitate. So there's no color change per se, but again, you do get a change in state, which is a pretty major observation. Now, you might look at these two and think, well, hang on, CR3 plus and Fe2 plus, they're both green solutions. And they both give green precipitates. How could you possibly tell a difference between them? Let's say if you've got two solutions, they're both green, you add sodium hydroxide, you get two lots of green precipitate. Well, the difference for chromium lies in the fact that if you add excess sodium hydroxide, something changes. CR3 plus, okay, reacts further with excess sodium hydroxide. So if you put it in drop by drop to aqueous chromium, you're going to get that green precipitate as described above. But if you put excess in, that green precipitate, that OH brackets 3, H2O brackets 3, that's solid, reacts with more hydroxide ions, and you end up with a ligand exchange. All of those uh, water molecules, the three remaining ones, are substituted with OH minuses, and you end up with the CR OH bracket six, three minus complex ion. Okay, so that's aqueous. Now, this is the precipitate re dissolving. So, our solid precipitate that initially forms when you add some sodium hydroxide, you add excess, and then that re dissolves to form another aqueous complex ion. Why does that end up aqueous? Because it's got a charge on it. It's three minus now, so it will dissolve in water. That's the only one of these five that does that. The only one, okay? You can add as much sodium hydroxide as you like to the other four, and those precipitates will not re dissolve. We don't get that ligand substitution reaction. We only get that neutralization reaction, that OH minus acting as a base. So, like I said, there's a pattern here. If it's a two plus charge on the ion, then two OH minuses react with it to form this neutral complex ion. And if it's three plus, of course, then there's three OHs. Chromium being an exception, because if you add more, then it re-dissolves that precipitate to give you an aqueous solution. And again, that is a green solution there. I should really write that in there. So we do get that green solution from our green precipitate re-dissolving. So make sure you know these equations. Make sure you use your state symbols to show that you're getting solids, you're getting precipitates there. And like I said, there's no two ways about it. You just need to get some flashcards together and you need to be able to remember these color changes. OK, so really, really important these because I'm going to be using these, linking it to the other precipitation reactions we need to know with ammonia NH3. So that's in the next tutorial.